Hello and welcome to this very special episode called Empowering the Ecosystem presented by Bank of Baroda in partnership with ET Now. It's a special series where I uh, meet experts and thought leaders from different sectors and talk to them and get their insights on the way ahead for that particular sector. Today we're talking about a very exciting sector that is fintech. Now there's a lot of big, lot of developments that have been happening in this sector and I'm joined by a panel of four experts. Allow me to introduce them to you. First up, we have Akhil Handa. He's the head fintech partnerships, mobile banking and digital lending at Bank of Baroda. We have Alok Mittal, co-founder and CEO of Indify Technologies. We have Rishi Gupta, MD and CEO of Fino Payments Bank and Nit Kamat, founder and CEO of Zeroda.com. Thank you, gentlemen, so much for joining me here today. Uh, first up, I want to come to you, Akhil. Now, the fintech space, I know you've been integrally involved in the fintech space for a long, long time now. How have you seen things develop, especially after the lockdown? How, what has kind of helped boost things in the sector? I think uh, COVID has brought in a sense of urgency in the industry overall in the incumbents. So, you know, we were anyways on a path of digitalization, but COVID has brought in this painful sense of a reality check that we need to digitize and we need to accelerate our digitization. So overall, I think there have been two sets of impacts. One, because of the lockdown and the physical constraints of moving around, the customers have demanded a lot more from us digitally. They want to engage with us digitally. And the second is internally, in terms of our internal processes, in terms of our customer faces, you know, we have had to accelerate digitization by many people. Now, if I you can cite a few numbers. Uh, so, for example, if we talk about our mobile banking, which is the customer facing app, uh, that we, you know, that the customers like to engage with banks with, you know, we have seen almost a two times jump in the rate of activation of mobile banking application. There's almost a 25% higher daily active usage on mobile bank now, and which is also translated into, you know, a commensurate uh, increase in digital transactions. Of course, the, there has been a dip in overall economic activity, uh, which means that you know the avenues where customers are spending their money on has also been constrained. But I would say all of this translates into accelerating digitization by almost two to three years. Rishi, you know, I want to come to you now uh, on the technology part. So. Uh, generally people would say that you know uh, Fino Payments Bank is involved in financial inclusion uh, in dealing with business correspondence yes that is an important part of your business but how are you using technology to reach out to the masses to get them into the banking space and uh, how has this accelerated after COVID-19? When we look at internally in Fino uh, COVID uh, always looks such as an opportunity in fact, we have coined this creating opportunities in various infected days. That is what COVID means to Fino. And that's what we talk internally is that this is a great opportunity to, for us to do many things which we would, could have never dreamt about uh, doing it. Something to what Akhil said that it is accelerated and unexpected gains are coming. So both culturally uh, in terms of uh, as a culture, uh, we are becoming more digitally advanced uh, as a company uh, from a people point of view people uh, even call centers are now started to work from offline uh, from homes and so there is a big opportunity in changing the entire way you look at business so when we look at our customer segment uh, which is spread across the country we are looking at the next 500 million people who are who are joining the banking or the ecosystem of financial services so we, we were able to build up this entire ecosystem through a digital model. Digital is physical and digital put together where some kind of assistance is required. So through our ecosystem of merchants, we have about 250,000 merchants across the country. Uh, then we cover about 90% of the districts. We are in about 650 districts in the country. So the digital approach helps us to bring the customer closer. So there's a digital in which you can do the business in zero meters. 
so mobile basically mobile in your hand means you can do business standing where you are so from a 10 kilometer radius where people used to go and do banking we brought them to 100 meters so within 100 meters of your workplace you will probably find a fino point or there will be some other merchant point which can enable uh, banking transactions for you and this would not have been possible without the technology change which we have seen in the last 10 years especially the ecosystem around jam uh, jandan adhar mobility uh, which came into being i would say amongst all of them the adhar ecosystem has actually played a very big part another big change which is now coming up is in terms of the iris and the facial recognition which is now going to become the next big driver in a contactless world in which you don't need to yeah. move physically touch people and through a contactless mode you can actually do transaction so i would say there has been a lot of improvements on technology especially around the last mile uh, mm. delivery which has happened mm. through the ecosystem which the mm. government and the regulators have created in the last 10 years uh, and we are the beneficiaries of that ecosystem with the government yes. and the regulator created nitin i'm coming to you now from again on the technology perspective because you're uh, india's largest stock brokerage uh, firm and uh, the role of technology has been phenomenal and you, you've been playing it really well i mean you just been awarded the et startup of the year award as well um just wanting to get your insights on how you're seeing your sector develop a uh, grow uh, owing to technology okay so firstly this whole lockdown i think we've probably been uh, you know one of the biggest beneficiaries of this uh, you know uh, online broking maybe online education or probably one and two in terms of uh, you know who have benefited out of this uh, you know we had taken nine and a half years to get to 2 million customers we got the the third million customer in like five months you know during the lockdown i think what is what has changed wow. is you know there were a lot of these trend setters uh, you know who uh, you know always constantly thought about saving investing but never had probably had the bandwidth to do it but this whole i think work from home gave people time to actually sit and think about the finances and uh, and what has helped onboard a million customers in five months is 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 our you know I mean, if there was there been help we could have onboarded uh, you know customers if onboarding was physical right so today uh you know customers use aadhar for kyc for signature and uh, and you know sebi has been very proactive in terms of you know uh, moving towards like a digital way of onboarding alo coming to you on i want to know your thoughts on the lending space how are you seeing technology changing things there when you're talking to businesses you're talking to uh, people out there about how they are lending out to uh, lending out money ahead i do think that uh, one of the changes that i have observed over the last 4 or 5 months is uh pre covid most of us were uh, very deliberate about which parts of the business really did we want to focus on for uh, amplifying the technology leverage right with covid all of us have found in a, in a situation where everything in the business needs to be automated right so there can't be a physical leg in any part of the business uh, and to that extent just how organizations have reacted to covid uh in regards to technology adoption is very very interesting right and for a lending business you must remember that you know a lot of the aadhar infrastructure for example is the onboarding part of lending right a lot of underwriting was happening in person right how do you start to automate that a lot of collections was happening in person how do you start to put more and more technology within that right you could ask each of those questions and there is an application of technology uh throughout the value chain which has become more and more important Uh, but i think the other key difference that i have seen especially you know startups uh, you know engage in is questioning their own core right uh, till february the definition of fintech especially in the lending and banking domains was to apply more technology to what a bank does right and be more agile uh, be able to get that uh, a differential i think the technology changes have also led to uh, a more careful examination of the business thesis itself uh, and i believe because of that many of us will come out stronger from the crisis uh, than what we looked mm. like in february or february how will fintech help as reach to every indian in every corner to get them to be a part of the dig- of the banking space so that they can get the benefits from the system as well so the bharat issue is not with regard to uh, technology i would say 
uh, technology is already there. Uh, people, whatever people are, uh, forty percent of my customers in rural India are on WhatsApp. Seventy, eighty percent of them are on Facebook, and we are actually running campaigns around Facebook and WhatsApp. So it's not about technology. Communication has become quite cheap. So from a Bharat point of view, I think Bharat right. is the central mm. requirement. Seventy uh, percent of uh, Indians live in Bharat. Mm. I think the focus of fintech industry was largely for cities and for the top 100 million people. That is now moving towards uh, Bharat, and I'm sure uh, the technology adoption will be higher. The challenge which is there in Bharat is that it is it's not about technology and digital. It is about cash. Uh, the people in rural India, the people in lower income, deal in cash. They earn in cash. They spend in cash. Yes. The places where they spend is also in cash. so digitizing cash is the biggest issue exactly coming to your point there rishi because i think the cash is of course it's cold hard cash it's in my hand i'm comfortable i'm 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 trusting it when you move to digital i'm not holding my money anywhere i'm holding a phone or i'm hold i'm in front of a computer you know alok i want to get you in on this point because you with your large bank of experience and being, being such an important part of the industry talking to so many people how are you seeing this trust issue being handled better and better there has to be a counterbalancing factor for trust right so you know payments here and adoption has been growing uh, steadily and what that indicates uh, indicates is that customers are willing to uh, trust digital payments right uh, however what we've seen over the last 4 or 5 months is uh, the compelling use case for doing mobile payments has appeared which is i don't have change as simple as that right when you go when you went to someone shop right. and you paid the always that change in the galla right now there is this guy coming to deliver you at home in any case it doesn't carry change right and that has the counterbalancing covid factor to compensate for trust right and hence we've seen another spike of uh, digital payments adoption right so i think message one i think there is an opportunity to use some of these uh, pain points to actually drive uh, more electronic payments the second is a word of caution you know i don't think we as a country have yet seen uh, the kind of payment frauds that are prevalent everywhere uh, while we have built some of the better known electronic payment systems i do not think that they are uh, immune to frauds as far as payments are concerned and not because the technology systems are faulty just because user behavior induces fault in them in as much as you know we are a financial institution and you know we do take the hit but we are also very mindful of our social obligation and the social obligation is that the country is learning how to deal with digital transactions right and you know there are you know we on an everyday basis we see instances of um of fraudsters trying to stay two steps ahead uh and hence it is very important that you know there is this layer of comfort that is provided right from the regulator that look you know what uh, it's fine deal with digital payments with confidence and should something go wrong right the onus lies on the financial institution right so hence that gives the right. the customers that added comfort what do you see are maybe the top two challenges and the top two opportunities the, for the way ahead i don't see there are challenges obviously uh, what we would like is that if more and more regulatory framework is created which is beneficial for the ecosystem is better for us like we as payments bank are uh, we on us on the regulation side we have restrictions to do uh, limited activity we can't do uh, lending we can't do other activities if those some of those things can be taken care of uh, that would be better but nothing with regard to covid in particular opportunities yes it's a big opportunity i would break this into internally and externally internally i think uh, digitization automation process process reengineering uh, your reorganizations in the company things which you could not even dream of uh, pre covid you can do now the employee productivity has actually gone up during work from home uh, the commitment from employees have actually gone up so in- internally i think this is a big opportunity to relook re- at your entire org structure opportunity to look at the way you do business uh, opportunity to look at the automation which you mm-hmm. can bring 
Mm-hmm. On the external side, I think uh, this is an opportunity where people, the customers, are trying to experiment. They are ready to experiment. Uh, they are ready to go with you. So as Akhil explained very eloquently in terms of the trust which is required as a banker, I think if we are able to maintain that trust with our customers, we can try and do many more new products and new areas where we can get in. Uh, provided the trust element is maintained, this is an opportunity to try something new and uh, go deeper into the geography. Yeah. I would say Bharat should be the forefront uh, for people uh, in the future, and we should uh, definitely look at doing more services for them. And they will pay for it. Uh, that yeah. is that is one myth people have that uh, poor people require mm. poor services, poor products, and they don't pay. I don't believe in that. They will pay for the services provided you give them good service. In fact, they you mm. give them CSR. That is what we call convenience, simplicity, and respect. If you give them CSR, Fantastic. they will give you all the money. And Nitin, coming to you, the way ahead, like same question: some challenges, some opportunities that you see. I think there are some of the challenges for sure. Is uh, is I you know I mean I think employment is a challenge, right? Because uh, you know we you know the efficiency of this of of uh, you know within our, our business has improved so much, right? Uh, so we've gone from catering to 2 million customer to catering to 3 million customer without adding a single person on the team our team size has remained the same right and and which is the bigger problem for this country which is uh, you know uh, how does employment get created i think personally you know while the productivity is up i think i'm burning out and i'm sure a bunch of my colleagues i know are burning out it's it's very tough to turn off in this work from home kind of a situation uh, right. and you don't want people to Burn out in a short term, you know. I mean, there's a there's a long term game, right? As in, you know, I mean, so yeah. So we we still trying to grapple around that. Uh, I think I think just the way you lead a team, I think the leadership skills skills required in a in a in an environment like this is very different to what we've been taught. Uh, you know, so I'm I'm still trying to figure. You know, I mean, we are doing the same, which is to do a lot of these web 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 meetings and stuff like that. But I don't know if that's the right thing to yeah. do. Right? So we we are we just trying to figure that out. Uh, but yeah, but that apart, I think uh, this has kind of given us, I think, for you know, businesses working on savings, investments, etc. I think this whole, this probably opportunity of a lifetime because uh, this, firstly, interest rates in the banks are low, so people are looking at other ways to invest, uh, you know, their savings, in, right? Uh, so I think it's it's uh, you know that way it's it's the opportunity is quite big for you know, be it you know equity or you know be it yes. gold or be it even fixed income <laughs> instruments. Um, so yeah, so we we bullish about it, but uh, not as optimistic as uh, she is about. <laughs> well, you know, it's always good to get hear both sides of the coins. Or uh, again, just everybody's uh, perspectives, everybody's views are always different. So it's always good to get to hear from more and more people. Uh, Alok, your thoughts? Indian market is so uh, you know poorly penetrated uh, that I think in terms of numbers of startups or amount of penetration. Uh, I have no doubts that those numbers will continue to look strong, uh, right? I think the real opportunity in my mind has been in the change in customer behavior that we have seen over the last four or five months, where a lot of assumptions that we had held close to our hearts uh, with regards to uh, customers not adopting digital, having a slower pace of adoption, having these trust issues. What that allows you to do is to just reimagine what you can do with your customer base. How can you serve them? Uh, delivery models. Uh, I think all of that right. is up for uh, reconsideration. Uh, I think there'll be fintech companies and other startups that will fill this vacuum uh, mm-hmm. and innovate to give customers better self-serve uh, mm-hmm. you know, products and services. Uh, so, so I'm quite excited about where the startups and fintech in particular is trending over the next few quarters to next few years. Mm. Uh, I do think that one of the challenges for India has been on the regulatory architecture. Uh, and there are several of those fault lines that have gotten exposed through the COVID crisis. For example, despite the best efforts, the ability for the government or the regulator to transmit monetary policy and liquidity down the chain has been called into severe question. Uh, and I think there is again scope for innovation there uh, to make sure that uh, our uh, regulatory rails continue to work efficiently and they can support the pace of innovation that technology can offer. 
Fantastic. Uh, Akhil, last word from you. I'll just uh, dovetail into uh, the word that Alok just mentioned, and and that is behavior. And I think all said and done, uh, you know, behavior is the fundamental change that will come out of this crisis, and that will have huge ramifications for everybody. You know, for uh, banks, for fintechs, for infrastructure providers. Uh, for the regulator, the government, etc., and you know, marketing 101 is do not fight customer behavior because it it just takes an incredible amount of investment and and spend to get them to change or adopt to to anything very which has a step change. And COVID, I think, has provided that impetus to provide that kind of uh, uh, a behavioral change, and all for the good because ultimately digital is good, right? It drives down the cost. It is instantaneous. It is very efficient. Uh, it is measurable. Uh, you know there are there are a range of benefits that come with with being digital. And I think as we become more digital, customers become more digital. You know the institutions have to lock in that direction. Fantastic. Well, uh, thank you so much, uh, Akhil, Alok, uh, Rishi, and Nitin for coming on board here today and for sharing your thoughts on this. Uh, it was a very interesting and a thought-provoking discussion. And thank you so much, viewers, for tuning in. And I hope you've been able to get some great insights and you're taking back home some of the thoughts that have been shared by these experts on fintech and how we are all working together to empower the ecosystem. This is a very special show called Empowering the Ecosystem presented by Bank of Baroda in partnership with ET Now. Thank you so much for watching.